You are exalted above the names. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo. I'm a Christian content creator and I'm here once again to share from the Open Heavens Daily Devotional that is compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. And the reason I'm sharing from this particular Christian book is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepare to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year of sharing from the devotional and that's why we call this season five and all those videos from 2020 they're all loaded on my youtube channel my handle on youtube is temi Agedo, which is right on the screen now i encourage you to visit my channel not only to view those old open heavens videos which are a great study guide but most importantly to view the open heavens for the current day and i know that will bless you exceedingly are very very important while you're on my youtube channel don't forget to subscribe like comment and share and god bless you as you do now pastor adeboye led me to christ in october 1997 a few years back when i was in the university of lagos nigeria in west africa and that will give you a few scriptures from the bible and a memory verse and that helps you to understand the body of the text praise god so let's go straight into the daily devotional today is wednesday october the 23rd wednesday october the 23rd and the title of today's open heavens is focus 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 and um over the so we had we started a series last week saturday we finished on monday and just all the scriptures that we have been reading that we started if you follow the series you will understand what we talked about yesterday where we say we had to wrestle and focus because daddy has been focusing a lot on um <laughs> he's been traveling through the book of genesis with isaac and your spiritual father which we talked about you know we've just been going through very similar scriptures like it's like a like you know everything is just lining up they're not nothing different we're following similar scriptures so looking at focus too um as i was reading yesterday's open heavens you have to wrestle when we began to talk about um, elijah and elisha you know i just remember that i just when i i saw the wednesday topic i was like that's a good example of focus focus um focus is looking at something without being distracted okay setting your eyes and you're not moved by um what's going on on your left the bible says turn not to the left hand onto the right hand you know so praise god so we're going to be reading two sets of scriptures from two different books in the bible we're going to be reading from colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 and we're also going to be reading hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 praise god so focus and so let's start from the book of Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 3. I'm going to be reading from the traditional King James Version and that goes the reading of God's word. Okay, I think I close Hebrews 12. So let me put this, let me put this here actually. So Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 3. And Paul is saying that if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, for we are dead, and our lives are hid with Christ in God. I'm including us in the scriptures. Praise God. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, and not things on the earth. If For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Okay, so that's Colossians 3, verses 1 to 3. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And it says, Wherefore, seeing we are, we also are encompassed, we are encompassed about with so great a cloud of weaknesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him and endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Praise God. So, um, focus. Now, you see, he said we should look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He said, Wherefore, seeing we are also encompassed with, about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. <laughs> Dr. Luca used to pray a prayer. He used to say, 
But now of evil load, carry your load in Jesus' name. So he's saying you should lay aside every weight, all those extra things that you are doing or people you are carrying that God did not send you to carry, lay them aside because they will distract you. And the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience and endurance the race that is set before us. So lay aside, the Bible says we should lay aside the sins that so easily as sin. Those people that are our friends that are causing us to sin. Um, violently separate yourself from them. And that's what Abraham did. Abraham said, see, if you go to the west, I will go to the east. If you go to the east, I will go to the west. That's what he said to, to, to Lot. And the Bible says as soon as Lot was separated from him, God spoke to him, focus. Say, so looking on to Jesus. This is what Peter made the mistake, you know. When he was, when, the, when Jesus Christ came walking on the water and he said, if it's you, bid me come. And the Lord said, come. And as, as long as he was looking at Jesus, he was fine walking on the water. But as soon as he saw the boisterous wind, you know, and he looked at all the things that were going on, the bills, the things that were happening in his life and all those things, things that, you know, were happening in the world. He, as soon as he took his eyes off Jesus, he began to sing. But as long as he was looking up to Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of his faith, he was walking on the water. You know, so what this scripture seems to be telling us is that no matter what is going on, don't let anything separate us. We must not allow anything. Do you understand? We must hold on. We should we not be moved by what we see or what we hear or what is going on around us. Just let, let our eyes be on the Lord, looking up to Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was. So we must keep our eyes on the cross. Another thing that's coming to mind is when the children of Israel have sinned and um, God said to Moses, build a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. If anyone has been bitten by serpents, if they look, they will leave. Do you understand that if they look at that bronze serpent, and the Bible tells us that as Jesus Christ told us that as Moses lifted up the, the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of God has been lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him, whosoever looketh unto him and focuses on him will not perish. Even if he has been bitten by the serpent, he will be healed. Do you understand? So you have to look at that bronze serpent. And the Bible tells us that some of the children of Israel they did not look and they died. So we must look at that Jesus who was on the cross. And is now seated at the right hand of God in the heavenly places. And in Colossians, we're saying that we should set our affection on things that are above and not on the earth. Praise God. Set our affection. That the things that make us tick and make us happy are the things that are in heaven, our home above, you know, preparing for the rapture. Praise God. So that's my interpretation of that. Let me see. Let me just look, look at the Colossians again. Set our affection on things that are above and not on the earth. If you then be risen Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. We want to, we are looking to please our master. Our eyes are on him. The Bible says, as the eyes of a servant look at up to his master, and the eyes of a, a servant, a made handmaiden, made they look at up to her mistress. So our eyes are on God. Our deliverance comes from him. We are trusting no man. Our eyes are on God. Praise God. Focus. All right. Um, so uh, memory verses, Proverbs 4 25. It says, Let thine eyes look right and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Don't be distracted. You mustn't be distracted. We can't afford to be distracted. We have put our hands to the plow. We will, we will never look back in the name of Jesus Christ. Nehemiah, when they told him, um, um, Geshem the Arabian and Tobias, Tobias and what was the name of the second one now? You know, this uh, the guys that were fighting against Sambalat and Tobiah. They said, Oh, come, come, let us talk. Nehemiah said, I'm doing a great work. I cannot come down. Hallelujah. I'm doing a I'm I'm too busy. I'm focused on where God has sent what God the assignment God has given. I don't have time for nonsense. I'm doing a great work. I cannot come down. Focus. In 2 Kings 2:10, Elijah was basically telling Elisha, son. You have asked a hard thing that I can't give you, but God can give you. Just don't be distracted. Stay focused. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2 says that you sh we should lay aside every weight and look unto Jesus. Be focused. Yes, be focused. We, we must be focused in the name of Jesus Christ. We lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us and we run with endurance. This race that God has set before us. We fight the good fight of faith. You no, know, we have the Holy Spirit. 
the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is one that is helping us. He helps us in all things. That's why Jesus Christ said, Tarry you in I can't guarantee your success. Tarry you in Jerusalem until you be endured with power from on high. I can't guarantee your success. But now that the Holy Ghost has come, and we are now born again, and Christ is dwelling in us by the power of his Holy Spirit, we can't fail. He will help us to be focused. If we want, you know, if we, we set our eyes on him and we ask him, Lord, help us to look straight ahead. Help us not to be moved by what we see. Amen. So that's why Elijah was telling Elisha that, okay, you've asked a hard thing. You want a double portion. No problem. I cannot. You've asked a hard thing. But if you see me when I'm taking up, what you have asked will be yours. And that's why Elisha, and you understand. So if Elisha had that at one point said, oh, eh, sorry, I need to, I need to quickly make a phone call. You understand? By the time he came, the, the, Elijah would have gone and he would have missed that double portion. So what Elijah was saying to him is just be focused. Focus on me. And Hebrews says we should, uh, Paul says in Hebrews that we should lay aside every weight, everything that God did not send you to do, every relationship you are in that God is not in. You know, all those things you are doing, all those parties you are going to that does not have any eternal weight, lay them aside. All those people that you have brought into your home that you are trying to do this for them, that God did not send you. You did not even ask God. You're just carrying load. Oh, now, evil load. Carry your load in Jesus' name. Lay aside every weight so that you can look onto Jesus. The devil will try to put many weights on you to distract you, but you must stay focused. People may criticize you, lie against you, and say negative things about you, but we must remain focused. Some years ago, people were criticizing me almost everywhere. I ignored all of them and remained focused on what God called me to do. By God's grace, I'm still marching on. But no one knows where some of the people that were criticizing me are now. Daddy said some years ago, they're still criticizing daddy today. As they're criticizing a lot of Christians. So the brother is saying that um, that he didn't, he didn't answer any of them. He didn't answer any of them. He just continued to do what God had sent him to do. Actually, and some of those people that are criticizing, the majority of them are Christians. You know? <laughs> um, so that is saying he stayed focused. Um, and people were criticizing. They're still criticizing him today. Oh, you see, those people, their babies are dead. What do I mean by that? Their vision is dead. You know, so they want to steal somebody else's vision. Like those two prostitutes, both of them had children. One, the, one of them slept on her child at night. And while the other one was sleeping, she took, she took her dead baby and put it in the bosom of the other woman and took the woman's living baby. The woman was sleeping. When she awoke in the morning to give her baby suck, behold, her baby was dead. When she looked closely, she knew this was not her baby. And they went to King Solomon and the, the real mother said, the living baby is mine and the dead baby is yours. And the other wicked woman said, the living baby is mine and the dead baby is yours. You understand? So some people want to steal your, their vision, their babies are dead. The vision, the baby of their vision is dead and they want to steal your own living baby. Don't, don't, don't give them the time of day. Stay. That is says, when they were, they were, they were criticizing him. He remained focused. He remained focused. And by God's grace, he's still marching. Okay, where are, where are all your accusers? Jesus asked the woman, the adulterer. So who, who accuses you? <laughs> no one. He said, go. Amen. So we must stay focused on Jesus. He's the one that has the final say. As long as God doesn't have a problem with you. Hmm? Nothing else matters and nothing else makes sense. The weights that the devil will try to use to sway your focus will not only be from people that dislike you, some of them will be people from will be from people that love you. Their praises, for example, can be a weight that you must set aside so you do not lose focus. Their praises, hey, hey, hey. praise God. You see, if you don't, if you didn't what if you didn't listen to the open heavens over the last few days, you won't understand what that, that is talking about. So you see, uh, lay aside every weight. Huh? That is saying that. All those weights may not only come from wicked people, but also come from those that love you. They will be giving you bad advice, praising you. Just go on. Don't, don't mind them. Don't, you know, they'll be praising you. And <laughs> I, my mother will say they are putting you, they're putting that person on a horse that's actually a cockroach. <laughs> There's a way they say it in, in my mother's language, she that is language also, you know. Um, so he's saying that their praise, for example, can be a weight that you must set aside. So when they begin to hail you and praise you as if you are a mini god, they are making you an idol. Hmm? They are making you an idol as, as though you are a mini god and the thing is getting into your head. You must set that those kind of 
flutterings, I call them, set them aside so that you can focus, so that you don't lose focus, so that you do not begin to think of yourself more highly than you are. So that it says that the weights, the things that can make us look so, lose focus may not only come from those that don't like us, may also come from those that like us. So that's why we must make sure that we are, that we are listening to God and put away all, the, all those flatterers. Warn them and say, I don't stop it. I don't want to be flattered. I don't want to be flattered. Let my praise come from God. Let God be the one to announce me. I don't want to hear those. Although I, all those uh, Saul has slain his thousand and you have slain your ten thousand. I'm what I am by the grace of God. So that can also make that is saying that that can make us all those flatterings can make us lose focus. That is says a man once offended a great king and should have been beheaded. However, the king decided to give him a test. The king told him to carry water in a spoon and walk for some meters. If he spilled a single drop of water, he was to be beheaded. The king asked some people to stand on his left hand side and criticize him. They were to rain abuses on him and keep on booing him. On his right hand side, the king asked some other people to stand and keep praising and hailing the man until he got to the finish line. The man started walking and the people on both sides did what they were told to do with all their strength. At last, the man got to the finish line without spilling any water. The king asked him, which of these people helped you succeed? He responded, none of them. I was carrying my life in my hands, so I did not listen to either of them. Great teaching. So that is said, a king had a guy, a gentleman, a, no, a man had offended the king, and the king was, he was supposed to be beheaded. But the king decided to test him. So the, the king asked him to put water in a cup, you know, in a spoon, and walk to the finishing line. And then the king commanded some people to stay at the guy's left hand to boo the man, curse out the man, rain abuses on him. And then he also asked some people to stand on the right man, the man's right hand and praise him and hail him, you know, and, and butter him up, you know. But the man took the water to the finish line and he did not spill any. So the king asked him, which of these people helped you succeed? And he said, none of them. He said, because if he had listened to both of them, he would have his life was in his hands, so he could not afford to be distracted. Do you understand? So don't listen to the praises of the of people or the criticisms of the people. That is said yesterday because people who are saying, uh, <laughs> let me that people who are saying uh, uh, hailing him as king tomorrow could be the same. He said, um, yes, he said uh, because the people remember those shouting hosanna today can turn around to shout, crucify him tomorrow. So don't listen to any of them. You understand? The, the person that we need to be listening to and focusing on is our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that, he's the only, the songwriter said, only you matters, only you make sense. I love that. So he's the only one that matters. He's the only one that makes sense. At the end of the day, the, the, the files, the papers are going to end up on his table. We're all going to stand before our maker and have respect for the Holy One of Israel. He is the one that matters. He's the one that justifies. I, if he said, you are washed, we are washed, we are sanctified, and we are declared not guilty in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the Spirit of God. If Jesus Christ exonerates us, we are free indeed. He's the one that matters. What anybody says does not matter. You understand? Of course, we listen to, if, if people are making, you know, telling, correcting us, we listen to them, but Jesus Christ, who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. So, the action point is set aside every weight that the devil is using to distract you and focus on achieving God's purpose for your life. I wonder if I still have time to tell this testimony. Okay, so, um, I remember when I got born again in the University of Lagos and um, I joined the, the Sovereign Army Fellowship, which was the Redeemed Fellowship on campus. And I had just started my journey of being born again. I didn't know anything. Or like, do you understand? I was just in fellowship. You know, but one day we're having a leaders, and not leaders, a workers meeting. So I just thought to myself, let me just buy some biscuits. And, you know, and I bought for the, you know, and so they just assumed our leaders who were not, you know, leaders have to walk by the spirit. They just assumed, oh, because she's, she's so taught about us, we should make her the welfare secretary. I didn't know anything. I just knew that as soon as I became that welfare secretary, it was like a burden. I was, there was an un, unease in my spirit. Then they made me head of decoration. I was a departmental leader. I didn't know nothing. I just knew I, I, this could not be. I could not, I could not function here. I didn't know what was going on. And then it was so prestigious to be the head of a department in the popular sovereign army. I, I, I didn't know. I didn't understand what was going on. I just knew that um, the spirit in me was unsettled. 
okay and something was wrong so i prayed and i said lord he said come out drop that leadership and go into the bible study department so it, it, how it is is that that was such a prestigious position and if i wanted to shine in the eyes of people and look big you know i was a a departmental leader in the fellowship that was a good position but spiritually i was dying and the Lord said, come out of that department and go to the Bible study department. So there was another head. There was a head in the Bible study department. And I was coming out from being a leader in one department and going under her. But that was God's will because that's where God wanted me to be. And as soon as, and when I told them, they were like, oh, as if I committed a great sin. Nonsense. I was young then. I didn't know. I wasn't grown. Anyway, I did exactly what the Holy Spirit told me. And I was like, you know when you take out fish from water and then you put the fish back in the water. I was just... That was I found my place, and I think that is what's that was the pattern that God had taken me through, and that's why I'm doing the same work, that same Bible study. Praise God, do you understand? So you see, I had I had lost focus, I'd lost, and that is saying set aside every weight that the devil is using to distract you, and focus on achieving God's purpose for your life. And that's why some people you find them they'll be working in the company, they're earning so much, and they quit, and you're wondering why, why, why. But that's what they're doing. God's will is not in it and is distracting them from God's plan. And God is saying, lay aside that weight. Do you understand? So sometimes you see people quit things and you're wondering why. Why would we do that? But you don't understand is you don't understand what God is doing. God wants us to lay aside every weight. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we glorify you. We magnify your great name. Father, Lord, we pray that you help us to lay aside every weight and the things that so easily ensnare us in the name of Jesus. Every load that we are carrying that is not the, the will of God. Father, Lord, help us, Almighty God, to set them aside with courage in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, help us to lay aside the sins that so easily beset us and help us to run with endurance, the race that you have set before us in Jesus' name. Give us courage, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, help us not to be distracted. Help us our, uh, to look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Let our eyes continually be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us not to look to the left or to the right in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to stay focused. Help us to stay focused. As we have put our hands to the plow, help us not to look back in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Lot's wife was not focused. Praise God. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. I hope this blessed you. I'm sure it did. Um, my name again is Sister Temi Tayo. I'm very important. While you're on my YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe. Even if you've seen me on Facebook, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And God bless you as you do. And don't forget to like when you like. Um, YouTube will recommend the open heavens to other people. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a beautiful Wednesday. God bless you. <laughs>